What's up everybody, JJ here. Today I'm gonna to be taking you through all the steps from switching from printing PLA. This is the beginner filament, super easy to print. Everyone should start on PLA. Get a good foundation of printing, and then you can upgrade to PETG. No, not that PETG. Also not that PETG. This PETG, also known as PETG. They say it's similar in ease of print to PLA, but it does have some nice thermal and strength characteristics that are a little bit better than PLA. And once you get your settings dialed in correctly, you should be able to print PETG almost as easy as you can your PLA. And today we're just gonna go through some of those steps of getting it dialed in correctly. I'm gonna be using the Anycubic Mega S with the stock hot end and stock bed. But if you've already upgraded those or you're using a different printer, these same steps should work the same for you. So let's get right into it. Everyone says it's pretty easy online. How hard can it be, right? Well, here we are, two print days later. So many stringing tests failed. So many calibration blobs. They just come out like this. This is not what he's going for. It's supposed to be a benchy, not this. But I found it. I found the solution. I found what solved it all. Do you wanna know what it is? It's something really small. It's here, right here in my hand. Your nozzle. Change your nozzle if you haven't in a while and you're trying to print PETG. If you're getting inconsistent results, if it works sometimes and then you get a failed print but you didn't change the settings, just change your nozzle. Get a big pack of these and when it clogs, when you get inconsistent results, all of a sudden settings used to work and now they don't, just change your nozzle. It's one of those beginner mistakes that I made again this time. I would change something small and then all of a sudden it would be a failed print, just a pile of spaghetti at the end. That's what I'm making step one, even though it really shouldn't be. You should keep a clean nozzle on there, especially if you're using brass nozzles. They're cheap, just change them out. Now that that's out of the way, and you did change it, right? You're not just watching the video and not changing your nozzle, change your nozzle. Now onto step number two. I was getting some under extrusion and I realized I hadn't calibrated my e-stop since I got the printer. And so it's always good to double check your e-stops. Super simple to do. I'll link to an article that has all the equations you need. It's really simple. Disconnect your Bowden tube, measure out 120 millimeters of filament, and then tell your extruder to extrude 100 millimeters of filament. You measure the distance and make sure it's 20 millimeters. If it's more or less, you'll need to change your E-step value. There's other videos out there that more in-depth explain it. I would just recommend that if you're getting under or over extrusion. And then you know your extruder is calibrated, so then you can change your flow rate later. The next thing that's really important is your bed leveling. I usually do a pre-bed level and then have it do a couple rings of a skirt around your print. That way you can do some live bed leveling. If those rings around are too close or too far away, I just adjust as it's doing those rings since I don't have any sort of mesh bed leveling on here. I did just order a BL Touch add-on that I will be installing on this 3D printer. Subscribe down below if you're interested in that video. Now onto your actual printing settings. I would recommend starting with what's printed on the side of the filament. This one says to print the, heat the nozzle between 220 and 260 and the bed between 60 and 80 Celsius. So I would say start at the bottom of those ranges and then work your way up until you get some good looking prints. Printing on the cooler end of things typically for me helps with stringing and overhang tests, but every printer is gonna be a little bit different on how it reads those measurements. So these are just sort of starting guidelines. You'll need to adjust for what works best for you. Once you have a baseline to start with, the next thing to tackle is your initial layer settings. I use Cura as my slicer, and so with that you can adjust the initial layers, temperature, speed, and fan settings. All three of those need to be adjusted for PETG. I needed to greatly slow down the speed. I was printing around 15 millimeters per second, worked really well for a first layer. Turn the fan speed off. I have it off now for the first five layers of the print. So that way the plastic sticks really well to the heated bed and you won't have as much issue with warping. I also found if I print the first layer about five degrees hotter than the rest of the print, it helps the plastic just stick really well and get a good solid first layer. So much of 3D printing is getting a good first layer because it doesn't matter what the middle of your print does. If the first layer fails, the entire print is gone. Now that you've got a good first layer laying down well, it's time to print a temperature tower. But this will help you dial in what temperatures look best for you. For me, somewhere in the 230 to 235 range worked really well on my printer. Your next step will be adjusting your cooling fan. 3D printing is all about heating stuff up accurately and then cooling it down very quickly. And with PETG being printed a bit hotter than PLA, I found it needs a lot of cooling fan to get good overhang printing. So I cranked mine all the way up, but it doesn't turn on until we've printed five layers. That way again, 
the first layer sticks really well. The final setting I would recommend adjusting are your retraction settings. Your retraction speed and distance need to be adjusted to reduce stringing or little blobs that get left along with your print. Some of these early ones were pretty bad on their blobs, but I found for me, six millimeters retraction distance and 25 millimeters per second retraction speed. And I adjusted around that range a good amount and found those settings really just worked best for this printer, for my Bowden setup. Everyone's gonna be slightly different with a different Bowden setup. The tube will be a different length. The pressures will be different. So do try to calibrate that one if you're having issues with stringing. And that pretty much wraps up my progression from PLA to PETG. I think this progression of benches here really show, initially I got a lot of these where it would fail halfway through, overhang issues. Then I started to get them to complete, but still had a lot of overhang issues. And then I've created what I think is a pretty darn good looking PETG benchy. It's still not perfect. There are still some blobs and zits. And the results of this are about as good as I normally get on a PLA printed benchy. So I'm pretty happy with these results. Now that I've got PETG printing pretty consistently on this printer, I do have a lot of plans for upgrading the hot end carriage up here because you can't print a lot of those things with PLA they'll just melt and deform out of the way. And so I'm currently working on printing a lot more upgrades for my printer. Let me know if you have any questions down below about getting PETG printing, or if you have a favorite upgrade that you did to your printer. Let me know down below, I'd love to hear from you. Now that you're printing PETG, go out and print something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.